Hey guys, welcome back to the Hearing Tracker YouTube channel. My name is Matthew and I'm here to keep you up to date with the latest news in the hearing technology world. So make sure that you subscribe to this channel and press that grey notifications bell to be updated every time we release a new video. So diving straight into it. Did you know that there are a few big names in the hearing technology world that have integrated motion sensors, also known as accelerometers, actually built into their hearing aids? Yeah, both Phonak, Unitron, Starkey and Signia all utilize this technology in their own very unique ways. So let's get on to how. You may be thinking, well, that sounds great, but how do they get me hearing better? And it's a good question to ask. The first reason, and as far as I'm concerned, the most important use is to help your hearing aids to understand exactly which direction the microphones on them should be pointing in, based on your specific requirements at that moment in time. Let me expand on how this works. With motion sensors being built into your hearing aids, they can detect when you're moving and simultaneously having a conversation, and will automatically adjust the directional microphones to focus in the direction of speech. Clever, eh? So thinking about this logically, normally if you're sat down for lunch with some friends, you would want to hear the person speaking in front of you and perhaps to the sides too. So in this instance, the hearing aids will be set to focus on the front and to the side, but definitely not behind you. Then when you finish your lunch and you've decided to go for a walk, you would normally have somebody walking alongside you either to the left or to the right, but definitely not in front and not behind. The motion sensors in your hearing aids will recognize this forward movement and adjust the focus of the microphones to the side rather than facing forwards. I told you it was a clever feature. The second spin-off as a result of these motion sensors is health data tracking. The motion sensors are able to count your total number of steps and can also compute the distance that you've been walking or running. This information is then displayed in your hearing aid app on your smartphone and it's also broken down so it shows not only how active you are, but also the types of activities that you've been engaged in, such as sitting, walking, or even high level movements like running. The hearing aid manufacturers with this integrated technology actually boast that using a hearing aid gives a more accurate reading in terms of health and fitness than wrist worn health tracking devices. And it's only a matter of time before they start becoming integrated into all earbud devices instead of being worn around the wrist. I don't know why they think this. 9,998. 9,999, 10,000 steps. Excellent, I'm done for the day. Now the third unique hearing aid feature born from hearing aids with built-in motion sensors is Starkey's fall alert function. Fall alerts automatically notify up to three people from your contact list on your cell phone if you've fallen over by sending them a text message alerting them of your fall. Whilst this isn't something that many of my patients use, it's pretty cool that there's a feature out there that you can utilize if you're worried about having a fall and somebody not being notified, or you may have an elderly relative that lives alone. This could well give you the confidence and peace of mind that if something did happen to them, support could automatically be notified. So the final feature built onto motion sensors is tap control. This is a way of interacting with your hearing aids without having to use a smartphone app or press the buttons on the back of them. In practice, this means that with a double tap of your hearing aid, you can play or pause music, end or accept phone calls, or even start your personal voice assistant, meaning that you could speak to Siri or Google Assist to ask them what the weather's like today, or even to put something in your calendar. Wow, all of that and I still have four more exciting hearing aid features to go now. So. Next on today's list is a live translation feature. Yes, you heard me correctly, a live translation feature, which is of course, without question, a pretty cool feature to be built into a set of hearing aids. So this is available through Starkey's Thrive app. And if someone speaks into the microphone on your phone, the app will automatically translate the speech and display it on the screen in another language. But that's not everything. Building on that, when the other person speaks into your phone, the app will automatically translate their speech, display it in your language, and also stream the translated text directly to your hearing aids in your language too. And it also works in these 27, yes, 27 different languages. Let me know what you think about this in the comments beneath this video. Do you think it's something that you'd find useful? This is a very unique piece of technology which solves an interesting dilemma for when it comes to managing hearing loss and having to choose between whether hearing aids will sound as natural as possible 
or providing you with the best, strongest and richest acoustic signal. This technology is called Active Vent and it's unique to Phonak. Now, believe it or not, the fittings on the end of your hearing aids are incredibly important, not just from a comfort perspective, but they also have a significant impact on how your hearing aids sound. By changing the tip on the end of your hearing aids, this can allow for us to divert more or less sound down your ear canal, or on the contrary, more or less sound via the hearing aid itself. In turn, this can change how your own voice sounds, it can change how much clarity the hearing aids will provide you with, how well you cope in background noise, and even how music sounds when it's being streamed from your cell phone. Now frustratingly, there are both positives and negatives to having your ear more open or more closed, and sometimes I would want to do both at the same time with a single patient, which until ActiveVent was released, I just wasn't able to do so. So it works by allowing me to both provide an open and closed fitting with the same piece of equipment. So for the majority of the time during the course of your day, it will be set to an open fitting to allow for a far more natural listening experience. Combining the useful hearing that you've got left, which would naturally enter your ear canal and hit your eardrum normally, with sound being produced by your hearing aid to, let's say, fill the gaps and compensate for your hearing loss, providing clarity and detail. Then there are two different scenarios where active vent would kick in and the receiver would go into a closed mode. The active vent does this with a small piston that's built into the receiver itself, which closes and it blocks off your ear canal and diverts all the sound through your hearing aid, so there's nothing entering your ear canals naturally. The first scenario in which this happens is when you're in a noisy environment. And why is this helpful, I hear you cry. In a noisy situation, when you have hearing aids with an open fitting, yes, the hearing aids are providing you with the clarity that you need to account for your hearing loss, and yes, the noise reduction settings will apply to any sound that travels through those hearing aids, but the challenge really comes with any sound that's not going through your hearing aid and going into your ear canal naturally, because of course, the hearing aid doesn't have any impact on it whatsoever and it can't clean that signal up. However, if active vent kicks in, then all of the sound is diverted through your hearing aid and it's therefore fully in control of it and it can manipulate the sound as much as it needs to, cleaning it up and hopefully removing some of that background noise. The second situation in which the active vent will close is when you're streaming from your phone. So if you already have hearing aids that have the ability to stream, then you may well know exactly what I'm talking about here. And that's that your hearing aids may sound pretty good when it comes to streaming phone calls and the radio or podcasts, but sometimes the sound might sound a little bit flat and lacking of fullness, richness and depth, especially when it comes to music. Now, the reason for this is because if your hearing aids are producing any bass, they will easily escape out of your ear canal with an open fit on the end of your hearing aid. Active vent is useful as it closes off your ear canal, prevents any sounds that your hearing aids are producing from escaping, and voila, the sound is transformed from sounding flat and tinny to a richer and deeper sound with heightened bass. Now this next feature is something that's been around for a long, long time. And when I say a long time, we're talking about almost 100 years now. But it's had such a profound impact for those with hearing loss that it was impossible to not include it onto this list today. Now, for those of you unfamiliar with the telecoil, it's a small metal coil which is commonly built into the majority of hearing aids now. And it could well be built into the hearing aid that you're wearing right now without you even realizing. It acts as a receiver that picks up signals from a loop system. This loop system produces an electromagnetic field which is usually connected to a microphone set at a distance, such as in church, for example. The voice of the person speaking into that microphone is then sent directly to both of your hearing aids, so it doesn't have to travel that entire distance via sound waves to exactly where you're sat. This would give you supersonic hearing just like you were sat next to the person speaking, no matter where you're actually sat in church. As a result, this will reduce background noise and also make it better and easier to hear from a distance. There are no limits to the number of hearing aid users that can connect to a loop system at the same time, and there's also no difficult pairing process needed to connect to it. Here is a great example of the difference that a loop system can make in a public space. This first clip is a presenter talking at a distance in a noisy room. Good morning, everyone. Today, we're offering the following activities. And this second sample is the same, however, utilizing a loop system. You should notice a huge reduction in terms of the background noise and a far clearer and more distinct signal. Good morning, everyone. Today, we're offering the following activities. It's common to find them built into theatres, cinemas, banks or lecture theatres, and you can even find them built into the heads of some landline telephones. 
In fact, I imagine that you've seen this internationally recognized sign before, which tells you when the loop system is installed and indicates when you should activate the T setting on your hearing aids in order to activate it. The fifth and final feature to make today's list is artificial intelligence machine-based learning, which is a huge concept, and I'll try and keep it as brief and relevant as possible. Each hearing aid manufacturer has, in their own way, trained their hearing aids to accurately recognize the sound scene that you're in at any specific moment in time. They've done this by training the hearing aids built-in computer with millions, I'm not joking, millions of real life sound scenes, such as restaurants, train stations, or busy streets. Eventually, the hearing aids themselves learn to identify and balance each sound within that scenario so that you can access the sounds that are most important to you with the view to switch to an appropriate setting for your current listening situation. Now, Widex and Signia, however, have chose to integrate AI into their hearing aids in a slightly different way, which involves you, the hearing aid user, in the fine-tuning process. For example, via the Widex Moment app, you're provided with two different hearing aid settings to choose from, setting A or setting B, which have been chosen specifically by the AI system to work as effectively as possible in that specific environment that you're in at that particular moment in time. Once you choose which sound is best for you, this process continues with another A and B choice until you feel the setting is the most appropriate for you and your surroundings. Your preferences are also fed back to Widex to contribute to future AI learning. That's not just for you, but other hearing aid users too. Over time, this evolution of settings teaches the hearing aids to automatically adjust to your preferences when you go to similar environments in the future. So guys, that sums up today's video. If there are any other awesome hearing aid features that you'd like me to do a video on, or if you think that something should be added to the list, then drop the details in the comments beneath this video. If you like this video, then don't forget to press like. If you have any questions or comments, drop them beneath this video. And if you haven't subscribed yet, then make sure you do so. I'll see you in the next video.